Okay. So, uh, I did a couple tests uh, with the power output and input. Um, I did, I believe, four individual tests. Um, and then did the same four tests measuring, uh, I guess the first four tests I measured the input of my rodent coil only. Then the second set of tests I measured both the rodent coil and my circuit. So basically my amp meter is right off my battery. Tested that. Then I did it again with my amp, ma amp meter just across my um, rodent coil. And then took a voltage. I'm using a, an analog meter here for my voltage because of the uh, high frequency DC problem I showed you before. So I'm using that voltage reference across my rodent coil and my uh, my amperage input to get my calculation. Now what I've done here is made a very nice spreadsheet and I've entered uh, I've made a couple calculators on here to uh, measure my input and output of my tests. Um, basically what I've come up with is um, I actually get better efficiency out of this if I do not use the high voltage um, Toyota, Toyota, I can't say it, round, uh, wrapped rodent coil here. Um, so if I if I do that, I get much more higher voltage if I use it. If I don't, I actually get better uh, efficiency directly out of the rodent coil by itself. But if I were to, and I am going to, I hope, build a pulse or cap pulser type circuit where I charge up my caps, then uh, discharge those into my battery. Um, I think I could get a lot more out of it. But uh, I will post this spreadsheet with my video. It's got some pictures on here, the schematics over there. You can scroll over. Uh, this is in Excel, Microsoft Excel. If you don't have it, I can try to make this file a document, like a, a photo or something for you, so you can at least view it. But anyway, so that's my setup. Um, I tried to build um, just the pulse circuit itself, um, which would be right here, so I could use uh, even less amperage on the circuit itself. Um, instead, I'm just using my original box because I got better results out of it. I don't know if I got something different here or, or what the deal is, but that's fine. So, uh, basically... Uh, my next video will be update on what I plan on doing next. I guess what my goals are for my uh, upcoming videos. I got about eight or nine things, so you guys can tell me which ones you want me to do first. But I'll post that in another video another time. So, there's your results. Whoever wanted to see them, they are in this document. Um, like I said, I'll put it in the sidebar or the description, whatever. You'll just have to right click on it and select save link as and um, go from there. I can explain the circuit to you real quick. Um, let's see here. Uh, basically I've got my pulse circuit with my 555 timer and then uh, I've got L1 of my rodent coil going through the output of my MOSFET. Uh, I don't even know which one it is. I'll have to look that up. I didn't put that on there. Um, I've got on here that I'm usually using ultra fast dials as a rectifier. Um, right here is what they look like. Uh, I actually went back to the original uh, just generic um, Rectifier because these I believe these are rated at 600 volts is what I looked them up as and I don't think they're Doing so well because this is pretty high voltage. So it actually lowered the efficiency So I went ahead and went back to my standard ones but As you can see here. I've got I've got two rectifiers um, One is directly out of my high voltage coil and then I'm sending that back through L2 of my rodent coil and I'm rectifying it again and running it across my load. Uh, my load is a uh, 250 volt 200 
UF cap across um, a resistor here which is uh, 181 ohms 20 watts so that's I'm basically charging my cap my resistor is my load um, so that's what I'm doing there uh, if you guys got any suggestions that's fine let me know I can do it um, alright I'll quit boring you guys uh, hopefully my upcoming videos I did build a pulse motor and it works but I'll wait for another day to show that um, yeah I'll just wait you guys hang around thanks for watching I'll keep you updated see ya